I'd be interested to hear what John has to say. I want to do well, that conversation. Let's do this. Let's do this right now. Because I'm tired of arguing this. I'm going to put the exclamation point on it. Share my screen, please. There Let me is. know when it's up. Hey, just for the audience, this isn't happening. Close your eyes. Pretend it looks pretty. <laughs> okay, you, you kind of a pal fiddle with it as you go. All right, photons are particles. Let's take a listen to Richard Feynman. The first thing Newton believed light was corpuscular. Turned out that it had very strange properties from that point of view, and it was then explained that many of these strange properties was because, in fact, it was a wave, which was wrong. Turned out he was right. It was a particle. Professor Shankar, chair of physics at Yale, everything is really particles, all things, electrons, photons, protons, neutrons, they are all particles. So let there be no doubt about that. So why is he saying that? So we have photons or particles. We have a live double split. I said double split. <laughs> These guys are killing me. Live double slit showing discrete chunks. That that means quanta, particles of energy and momenta hitting the photographic plate. So it's really over right there. So we're going to show that. OK, so what I want you to do under any of the videos that Nathan has on 1980, you go down to the info box. Right. And down here at the bottom, you have double slit experiment. So you hit that. Nathan, I'm not going to play this video. I'm going to stop it. No sound and go through it. OK. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So we got Anton Zellinger here showing you a live Double slit. Sorry, experiment. can you make it full screen, please? Yes. One second. Let me get rid of that. Perfect. So we got a live. So we got a live double slit going, right? So let's get another couple looks here. Shooting a laser through a double slit, right? Keep going. There's the setup. He's showing the setup. He's got the laser going through the double slit. And he's going to have a detector here with a camera on the detector. And he's going to show you what happens on the screen. One second. Let me get it right. All right. So the double slit is running right here, right? And he's got a camera on this detector. And he's projecting it on this computer screen. So what's happening when this light is going through the double slit it's hitting the detector you see these little dots right that's where the light is hitting the detector and if you keep on going you see how there's more little dots that's little chunks of energy and momenta hitting the photographic plate well what are little chunks of energy and momenta they're called particles. Here we go. Still more. Still more. See them showing up on there? Still more. You can see them actually hitting. See them? See them? See, that's what's called particles. That is particle behavior. Waves don't act like that. These are discrete chunks of energy and momenta. Can I, can I add something? All right. Can I, can that's I, that's I can just add something before you move on? So Go ahead. The, the representation on screen is, um, for want of a better description, the computerization of what a photographic plate would display. In other words, if you had whatever it is with the emulsion and uh, what do you call it when it's just a normal plate of photographic material rather than a sensor. Do you know what I'm talking about? John? Oh, have you gone? You're on mute. Oh, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> yeah, right. 
there's some type of silver oxide, some type of, uh, uh, you know, photographic plate, emulsion plate, something like that. Right, like you get with the film. So a much more analog exactly. way of doing it, which is how the double slit was previously done before we had photographic sensors that could then be digitized to represent what's on a screen. In other same words, concept. it's exactly the same. There is no difference between a sensor and using the whatever you call it, silver and the emulsion and whatever you'd get in, like you get in the back of an old-fashioned camera, a film, basically. There's no difference in what is being represented. Yes, you could do it the old-fashioned way to show the actual discrete chunks on the film rather than on a monitor after using a sensor, like you get in a modern digital camera. I just wanted that bit in this presentation. Sorry to interrupt. If you can make it full screen again, if you've got any more example from this video. Thanks. I was on mute again. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, like I said, these. This is actually. Uh, I mean, I. I don't even know why I need to go on any further, but I will. Hold on. Let's get rid of that. So back to the presentation. So to refute photons as particles, you not only have to falsify the stamp on the forehead. Well, the demonstration that I just gave and the citations above, you must also fi falsify. Every single experiment with light over the past 250 years, specifically, you have to debunk these. Number one, the photoelectric effect, Nobel Prize, 1921. Number two, Compton scattering, Nobel Prize, 1922. In fact, I think he did this in 1922. I think the Nobel Prize was like 1925 or something. And then you have to fi falsify Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which states that the more you know the position of a particle – the less you know the momentum of that particle and vice versa. Here it is right here, right? You have to falsify all those. Best wishes. I'll get the popcorn. So I summarize these. The photoelectric effect. If light was a wave, then shining a light of any frequency on a sheet of metal, no matter the intensity or brightness, should liberate free communal electrons. This does not happen. Therefore, light is not a wave. Moreover, increasing the intensity of the select frequencies that do liberate the free electrons does not increase the kinetic energy. That's the K-max of the free electrons, now called photoelectrons. So one photon is absorbed by one electron. Therefore, light is quantized. Therefore, light is a particle. From radiology.com. The photoelectric effect describes the following interaction of EM radiation with a metallic surface. A photon with an energy frequency above the binding energy of an electron gets the photon energy. Did I skip a line? Let me try that again. The, photon, the photoelectric effect describes the following interaction of EM radiation with a metallic surface. A photon with an energy frequency above the binding energy of an electron gets absorbed and the electron is emitted. The positive energy difference is transferred to the electron's kinetic energy, like I just said above. If the photon's energy is not high enough for the electron to overcome its binding forces, the photon will be re-emitted. It is not the intensity of a photon beam, amount of photons, which allows the photoelectric effect. It is the energy frequency of a single photon, which will allow the emission of a single photoelectron. The, the discovery and study of the photoelectric effect leads to a new quantized understanding in physics. Albert Einstein was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1921 for his services to theoretical physics and especially for his discovery of the law of the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect is the most important effect in medical radiography. For example, it is the photoelectric absorption that is responsible for most of the absorption in a mammogram, which creates the contrast in the image. Number one, Compton scattering. Simply, light x-rays of known frequency were fired at a graphite crystal. Calculating the final frequency post-scattering, it always showed a change. It always decreased. According to classical wave EM theory, the frequency shift cannot be explained since frequency energy is a property of the incoming wave and cannot be altered by the change of direction. 
Conversely, considering the X-rays as particles, quanta photons, then applying, here it comes, Anon, energy conservation and momentum conservation of the collision of the photon and electron unequivocally demonstrates that photons are particles. So, turn out the lights. Party's over. They say that all good things must end, and this ends right here. So we're going to clip this out, and we're going to play it every single time one of these knuckleheads come on here and say, oh, it's not a particle. Okay? So we could be done with it and move on. Thanks. And with that, I'm going to say a huge, massive, enormous thank you to all of you who tuned in on the Nathan Oakley primary stream for hopefully smashing the super chat, liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out NathanOakley.com and the Flat Earth Debate Forum to keep up to date with the community debate. A massive thank you to all of today's after show panels for making this after show possible. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!